In this uh, Ladybug Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can use the Ladybug plugin to produce graphs like this and produce the sun path uh, based on temperature, based on the speed of the wind. And you can also have different results based on the total radiation, diffuse radiation, and direct radiation. So first we are going to explain these things in the Ladybug plugin. Then we are going to also talk about the wind, so you can also see how the wind is affecting your project uh, and see the profile of the wind based on the height. And at the end, we are going to give a simple example of a building and optimize it based on the orientation for radiation. So this building will be uh, calculated, the orientation of the building will be calculated based on the surroundings of those buildings. Okay, to start from scratch, what I want to do is to explain how you can install Ladybug in your Grasshopper and start modeling. So, uh, first you can go to the website and download this plugin. And what you have to do is to unzip this Ladybug and Honeybee folder into File, Special Folder, and okay, here we go, File, Special Folder, and User Object Folder. So, open the User Object Folder and unzip that or put that folder into the, uh, okay, let me just show you. You can see that I have this ladybug and honeybee in my user object folder and then restart your rhino and grasshopper. Then you will have this ladybug menu up here, which we want to have a quick overview of the plugin. It's going to take a while. So ladybug is a great plugin and it's a huge one. It has many functions, and you can also see that this Ladybug Primer is about 468 pages. I will also put this if you want to download this. Uh, so the problem is that uh, the, the components and the plugin is really complicated, but for now, we're going to focus on the basics and how fast you can get to the radiation analysis based on the orientation. So what I want to do is to first go to the ladybug and the ladybug and put this on the canvas. This will make the ladybug run and basically it will fly. So uh, when you just put this, uh, okay, let me just put the bifocals plugin so you can see the commands. And if I just put a panel to this output, you can see that this is saying hi, ladybug is flying and that is a success. So the first step is to put the ladybug ladybug on the screen and the next step is to go to ladybug and use the ladybug import EPW. You can also use the download EP weather files or other things but the best way and the fast way you can do that is to ladybug import EPW that is energy plus weather files. So let's, ju let's just put that on the canvas and for the EPW, you have to go to the Parms menu, the primitive, and put the file path on the canvas and set that to the file. So to download this EPW or Energy, uh, Energy Plus weather file, you have to go to the EPW map. So the address is the ladybug.tools backslash EPW map. I will also put this on the website post, so check out the post on the website. And after that, you can choose a city, okay? So after going and zooming in, you can also zoom in, uh, right click on a city, and you will see this. You have to hit Control C to copy it, so Control C, and then we can simply just paste this and download the file. So after downloading this file, you can unzip those files in a folder. So let me just show you. And here you can see we have three files here. And the most important one is the EPW file. So what you want to do is to go here and right click and set select one existing file. And we just put that EPW file. And then you can see that this is running. You can also see that the output is saying successful. So what we want to do is to first understand the sun path in Ladybug. So what we have to go, what we have to do is to go to the 
visualize with the data. We are going to use this menu in this tutorial most of the time, but we have to also use the uh, analyze period for the time, and we are going to just talk about one of those tools in the uh, environmental analyzer, so stay tuned. So what we have to do is to go here and use the ladybug sun path, okay? And if I just put this on the canvas, the north is the y direction, you can change that, but for now we can simply connect the location of the EPW output to the location of the sun path. And here we go, let's just zoom in, and you can see that this is showing you the sun path based on the file we just gave to that. Okay, the next thing you can do is to define the location of the sun based on two ways. One is to define hour, day, and month, and another one is to define the analysis period. So this is really important, and most of the ladybug tools needs this analysis period so we're going to, we are going to talk about this tool so if you just want an hour you can say maybe uh, eight and you can see that this is showing nothing because at the eight there the sun is not on the path so if I just increase that you can see that the sun is coming up uh, and on the day we can change that to maybe day 20 and the month can be simply eight. Okay, you can see the location is going up. So uh, you can define those uh, day, hour, and month, or you can simply go to the analyzers where the data and use this ladybug analyzers period. So remember, this one is really important, and we always use that to define the range of the days we want to get the analysis. So what I want to do is to define the month. You can see that this is the start, this is the end. So we can say from month uh, one to maybe month three, okay? So let's just do that. Maybe we want to define that from month one to month uh, three. And you can also change those things. You can see from day it's one to 31 and from hour it's one to 24. So remember, you can always time and define an analysis period to make that happen. So we have to connect that to the analysis period. Okay, so if I connect that, you can see that those sun locations will update and show you uh, based on month one, two, three. Okay, the next thing you can do with the sun path, and this is really important because other tools also operate uh, similar to this, is to define annual hourly data, but before that, remember you can change the center point if you want, you can simply define a point. Okay, let's just do that. You can define a center point and uh, set that point to somewhere. So the sun path will just change location. You can scale the sun path, scale the sun. This is, the default is one. You can give this maybe two or something if you want to scale that up. Okay, the projection is, you can see that the projection is 0, 1, 2. That means a 3D uh, view, which we will have now. This is 0. And 1 or 2, let's just check this out. 1 will just give you a projection, and sometimes you really need that. So you can just project that on the ground and have the sun path as a 2D graph. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, and the most important thing, which you will always see is this annual hourly data and conditional statements. Those will happen in Ladybug because you have to, maybe sometimes you want to compare things. So if I just go here and check out the uh, output of the EPWs, you can see that there are several outputs which are important. The dry bulb temperature, uh, the dew point temperature, the temperature that dew will just be produced. But that's not really important. The most important are dry bulb temperature, relative humidity, if you want that, wind speed, uh, wind direction, if you want to show the wind. So these four are really important. And we can just give this temperature to the annual hourly data because we want to see that on the sun, okay? And now you can see that the sun has different colors based on the temperature we just gave to the data. So if we want to show that uh, the sun based on humidity, we can give humidity to that. 
and the sum will just be colored based on the humidity from 30% to 100%. So this is really great if you want to see the location of the sun based on something, uh, humidity, wind speed, and so on. So for now, I'm going to give the temperature and compare that. I want to show you how you can compare that to, uh, okay, maybe wind speed. I'm going to use the shift key and add this to the annual hourly data and just wait so you can see that it's adding something here. So now what is conditional statements? The first we just gave was the first is called A and the second is called B and so on, C and uh, so on. So this is temperature and this is wind speed, I think. So if you want to define a conditional statement, you can say, Maybe I want a temperature between maybe 0 to, to, to 10, right? And you have to type this and because you want to say whenever the temperature is between 0 and 10, we want a speed between maybe, I don't know, 1, so it's going to be B and 3. So you can just combine things or you can just type or here, okay? So these are the two statements you can type. So let's just do this. I'm going to put a panel on the canvas and type uh, the temperature between 0, okay, smaller than, and bigger than 0, smaller than 10. Let's just do that. Give this to the conditional statement. And now you can see that this is going to change. It's going to start from 0 to 10. And one of those uh, series of the suns are gone, and you will see those times which the temperature is above zero and less than 10. So you can also combine that. So let's say we want to check the wind between 2 and 8. We want that. And between 2 and 8. Remember, it has, has to be a B, and it's an AND between that. And you can combine those conditional statements to produce the results and the last step uh, you can do is to just bake it so for the bake it you can see that we have two options zero is the default it's not giving any output but one is giving you hatches and two is giving you meshes but I prefer the mesh because it's faster so let's just give this a two and wait to see the results. Okay, so now you can see if I close this, we don't have anything here, but we have a layer called sun path, and we can define this. You can see dry bulb temperature, wind speed, and if I just turn this on, you can see that this is for the wind speed, and you have all those uh, meshes of the uh, sun and you have this text here that's really great you can just double click this and change the text if you want and you can also see that there's a legend here and you can also change that if you want so remember you will always have that in the layer so let's just turn this back and go here and go to the grasshopper okay so this was the first step you have to know because this is really important and we have to understand these things if we want to uh, produce the radiation. So let's just make this from, uh, I'm going to change this and show you. Okay, so what I have done is that I have put that from 0 to 20 degrees and we want to make a study on our building for those times which it's between that so you can have that uh, lady was some path okay let's go to the next step and uh, what you want to do for the Sun is to define uh, ladybug radiation rows okay you can see that that's a great graph if you want to show you the uh, show the radiation of the Sun and again we have this uh, uh, north here which is in the y direction that's not really important but now another parameter will show you that it's a selected sky matrix. This is really also important. It's really similar to that uh, analyzes period because you can see that many times. And that is the sky which you have to calculate before you have to calculate the radiation rows. So we always need that and it's really easy. You can go to the visualize weather data and take these two steps.
let's just make this happen. You have to make the ladybug generate cumulative sky matrix for the first step, and then go to ladybug select sky matrix as the second step to produce the sky. So remember, you have to <clears throat> make the sky to then make the radiation analysis happen. So we have to just put those two steps here, and you have to connect that cumulative sky matrix to this. And now you have to connect the EPW file because we need the location, that's fine. And the sky density, you can change that from zero. Uh, you can see that the dense, uh, it, it also explains everything if you just hover on it. You can see that the set the set to zero to generate it. Uh, trigons sky. I don't know what that means, but you can also look at those explanation if you want to change that. Okay, another thing we will need is to run it. So what is run it? It means that should I run it or not? So always when you see a run it, you need a toggle. Okay. So if you want to just run this uh, analyzes, we need a toggle and double click this to make it true and give it to run it. So these are really simple steps, but you have to know before you go to the next level, which is defining radiation. So after waiting to get the results, okay, so if we just go to Grasshopper, and here it is, you can see that it has run the generative cumulative sky matrix and now we have the selected sky matrix so we just made those steps to give that to the selected sky matrix and we will have that for any radiation analysis so now let's just turn this off on the preview and now what we want to do is also give a center of center point for that graph which we just dismiss that because we it is zero 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 and scale you can scale that the most important thing is run it again. Let's just connect a toggle and put that to true so we can see the results here, okay? Uh, and another thing which is important about the sky matrix, which I have to explain now, is this is for the whole year, okay? You can see that that's total radiation and diffuse radiation and direct radiation, okay? And you can see that the radiation mo is most distributed at the south and we have less uh, radiation at the north. And what we want to do is to define this radiation in two ways. One is the hour of the year or the analysis period. So if you want to have that in a day, month, and a year, you can give this hour of the year or just define a period, but I prefer this one because it's easy and we just talked about this before. We can simply give this a three month analysis period and see the results. So remember, you can always give that and see the results of that. So this was the radiation rows and you can see that you can change the number of arrows. The default is 36, which you can see here. And uh, you will always have the outputs. You can bake that. You can also bake it here if you want. You can simply just put a true to that, bake it, and get the result. So it's going to take a while, but you will have that in... Uh, um, okay, it's again, you can see that there's a 1 for hatches and a 2 for meshes. I prefer mesh, but now let's just see this again in the wind. Boundary profile, okay, radiation rows. And now you can see this is a hatch. Uh, it adds 11 hatches to the collection. So you can also have those hatches. And here we go, and we have those results. You have to make those numbers smaller. So here it is. And Ladybug is really great and manages data easily for those who want to just analyze it. Okay, so that was the step for radiation rows. So you can also give this uh, wind rose if you want. So I want to also show you how you can give it a wind rose. And we can simply again, uh, for the wind rose, you have to give this a wind direction and a wind speed. If you want to define annual hourly data, that's going to compare winds 
with temperature and other things. For, for now, we don't need anything of that. You can also define an analysis period. So let's just again give that three months period to this. And we have to give this wind direction and speed. And we have that in the EPW file. Here we have this wind speed and direction. I'm going to connect the speed to the speed and the direction here to the direction. Okay. Okay, I guess that I just made the connection wrong. So let's just connect the direction to the direction. And uh, again, let's just make a preview of that and turn this off. We need to run it. So here we go. So Ladybug is really easy with that. You can see how hot, how easy it is. And if you want to produce that by yourself, it's really hard because you have to send that to different softwares and get the uh, graphs because those softwares are going to manage your EPW file. But Ladybug is really great and gives you the output. You can see that the wind is always most at the south, south and the north. Okay. So uh, the next step is to show you the example. So we uh, talked about this to show you a simple example of how you can optimize a building. So assume that this is our building and this building maybe is surrounding buildings. Let's just draw this. Take that and give this another box. Maybe we just draw a complicated building, something like this, and extrude that and bring that up. Okay, that's a big building. So let's just bring this a little bit down. Okay, so uh, and let's just join these two by Boolean union, and here we go. So what we have to do is to go to the environmental analyzers, and these are great tools if you want to have radiation analyzers, if you want sunlight hours, which is great for parks, if you want to optimize a park. Uh, you can also use the view analyzers. I will also give these tutorials in the future, or maybe I just add these in the courses. For those who want to know more, you can also ch check out the course. Maybe I, in the future, I will add those in the courses. You can uh, see the solar envelope. That's really great. You can uh, use that to define the shading designer and use that to optimize things. For now, what we want to focus is to go for ladybug radiation analyzers because this is a really great tool and we want that radiation analyzer. So the north is the y direction. We have two sets of geometries. The first is the building, which is this one, and the context is the buildings surrounding this. Okay, so these are the buildings which are surrounding the geometry. So let's just do that. Go to the Parms menu and use a BREP. Set that, set that to the building and give this to the geometry. Another one is going to go to the context, set multiple, and I'm going to choose all the buildings and we're good to go. The next step is to define a grid size because Ladybug has to define a grid on those uh, surfaces and buildings to define that. So maybe uh, I give this, this is five meters uh, on here. I just saw that. So maybe a grid size of five is fine. But if you just um, decrease that number, remember it's going to take a while to calculate the results. And the distance from the base is also important. Okay, I think that was from another example there. Let's just delete this. And if I go to the main building and use this analyze direction thing, okay, you can see that this is the outwards of the building. So if I define a distance from the base, it's going to go outwards and it will calculate the radiation of the facade okay but if you want to calculate the radiation inside that you have to flip that before uh, getting the results so let's just turn everything off and define a distance maybe something like 0 0.5 a small distance from 
the facade. The next thing we have to talk about, okay, the selected ma sky matrix is what we talked about before, and we just produced that. Remember, we gave that a analyze period, so we make the sky from month one to three, and now this is the cool part of the radiation analysis. You can study the orientation of this building and rotate that so you can have the best results. And for, uh, for that, you have to go to the ladybug and go to the extra tab and head down, okay, head down here, ladybug orientation study parameters and use that one. So we have to use this ladybug orientation study and give this to this. And now what we want to talk about is what is this orientation study? What it does is that it's assumed that this is the building we are just studying. You have to, let me just draw this for you. So maybe this is 360 degrees. This is the steps, so I don't know, maybe that's 10 degrees, and then we need, let me show you with the yellow, that's the center point. Okay, so the blue one. The total angle is the total angle you want to study. So if you want to rotate that in a full rotation, which is, I think it's fine, uh, 360 degree is okay. The division angle is basically the angle or the steps you want to study. So if I give this a 10, uh, and the total degree is 360, it's going to be 36 steps, right? So you can have 36 different radiations and see which one is better. And the last one is the base point, which is the rotation, the Z rotation of the building. So let's just give this the base point. We can simply define a point. Okay, I guess that we have to give this in Rhino, so let's set this Rhino. You can also make a parametric point there. Uh, the division angle is 10, and the whole angle is 360. So this is the inputs, and now we have to give a toggle to the run the study. Okay, true. And now we have this orientation study, and it will just rotate all the building from uh, 0, 10, 20, and to up to 360 degrees. Okay, the next thing we have to uh, consider, this is not really important, legend parameters, so the default is fine. The parallel is that if you want to use multiple uh, CPUs, you can do that. It's going to run it faster, but remember it's going to slow down other softwares you're running, so I'm going to give this yes, I want a parallel running computation, and then we just run it. So we're going to wait and see the results. Okay, so after two or three minutes, let's just turn off the building. You can see that this is the results, and we have the radiation analysis here. And the most important thing is that you can see the grid size which I defined here, 5 is the grid size, which is giving us the results. So, uh, the most important things, that these, uh, okay, this part is not really important because these are the information Ladybug used. You can see that this is the test points on the building. These are the vectors that it's using, the analyzed mesh. But what we need here is this part. So you can focus on this one. The radiation results, you can see that we have the different results. But I guess that the best thing is radiation mesh and total radiation. These are the two things we prefer to have. Because the radiation mesh, if I connect a mesh from the PARMS menu, is the building itself. And the total radiation, if I connect a panel, you can see that this is giving us 36, 37, okay, excuse me, that was 37, 37 different results. And that is because we connected a, a orientation study parameters here. So what we did is we uh, divided, uh, we made a 360 degrees and steps of 10. So let's just make a range. We talked about range in different tutorials, but for now, we need a domain. So the domain was from 0 to 360, 
connect that to the domain, it will just automatically add that to the end of the domain. And the steps are uh, 36, because if you just count up 10, 20, 30, 2, 360, that's simply a math. 360 divided by 10, that means 36 steps. And now you can see that these are the numbers, 0, 10, 20, 2, 360, and that's 337 results. So why did I do that? Uh, because we want to find which one, which degrees here is the best results. And you can simply do that by sorting. Okay, let's just delete that. Let's go and sort a list. The key, that's total radiation, and give that here. So you can see that uh, sorting this from smaller to bigger, and I'm going to reverse the sort because I want that from bigger to smaller, okay? Again, you have to also reverse the output here. So when it's going to mix and sort the list of total radiation, we also want to sort the degrees here. So if you connect another panel to the values A, you can see that that's the equivalent of the radiation. So the best result is coming up by 20 degree rotation, and then it's going by 40 degrees and so on. And the worst result is going by 300 degrees. So what we wanted to do is to simply use a list item, which we had that before and pick the first result of the key and the first result of the value A, and here we have it. So this is the maximum uh, radiation, and this is the best, so let's just type this, the best orientation, right? And this is the best radiation. So what we want to do is to rotate our building 20 degrees, and so we just rotate that building around its center. We just gave it here in the orientation study parameters. Let's just give this to the center. The axis is Z. And the angle is going to be degrees, and that's 20 degrees. Turn this off. Turn this off. And here we have the best results. You can see that the building orientation is here. And you can see that the most uh, radiation we had before in the radiation rows was uh, in the south of the south of the building, and we have less uh, radiation at the north. So here you can see also the radiation rows uh, on the building. If I just put that in the center, it was better. So we can also scale that a little bit up, maybe three times, so we can see that. Uh, make uh, make that a little bit bigger. So uh, this was the way you can do that, but to prove that you can see if I change the location of these buildings, it's also going to change the orientation to another degree. So let's just do that. What I'm going to do is to change the orientation and I'm going to maybe move this a little bit further. Okay, okay, that is running, and okay, it took a while, so I'm going to turn everything off, and you can see that this is making it 180 degrees, so it's basically changing the radiation because we blocked it, maybe, and it's trying to have more radiation at this point because it's just being blocked by this building. So you can always... Uh, change the building, but remember you can always uh, in the middle uh, click of the button, you can just lock this solver, change the location, and again uh, unlock it. So, because if you just move it, you can see that it's going to take maybe five minutes to just calculate this uh, on a regular basis. Okay, thank you for watching, and that was a uh, Ladybug Grasshopper tutorial. And like this video to support us and subscribe to our channel and also comment your uh, ideas and your opinion about this video tutorial and see you later. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel and you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video that corner and see you next time.